my name is Nancy Knowlton. I work at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History, and we're here at the Smithsonian Community Reef, which is part of the Hyperbolic Crochet Coral Reef project that we're hosting here at the Smithsonian. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the reef? Is it scientifically accurate in the sense of the kinds of animals and life that we see here represented? Well, the, one, the, the idea about a hyperbolic, you probably wonder what's hyperbolic crochet coral reef all going together. They don't sound very compatible, but hyperbolic refers to the kind of roughly shape that a lot of marine organisms have. So if you look at the things that are on this reef, there actually a lot of them are roughly and hyperbolic in the way that, uh, that coral reef organisms often are. And then the other thing to me that really encapsulates uh, or links the, the crochet reef and a real reef is that reefs in nature are built by communities of organisms and this reef is built by about 800 crocheters, they're about 4,000 pieces. The crocheters actually ranged in age from 3 to 101 and include people from all walks of life including even some of the homeless people here in, in Washington DC. So it's really a project that unites a, an amazingly diverse group of people and gets them to think about coral reefs. So in any in terms of any particular piece, uh, some of them are closer to natural organisms and some of them are, have a little bit more artistic license, but the, together they give you this wonderful feeling of diversity of reef, which is actually very reef-like, I can say, as a person who spent a lot of time diving on coral reefs. Now you brought this reef here, can you tell us how you came to know about it and what input you had? Well, uh, I've, Mar the, this whole idea of a hyperbolic crochet coral reef is, a, is the uh, inspiration of two Australian twin sisters based in Los Angeles and they have an organization called the Institute for Figuring and a number of years they started this hyperbolic crochet coral reef project which uh, has a visits from place to place and has exhibits where usually they display some of their permanent collection and then the local community also creates a reef. And I first met Margaret because uh, she interviewed me at the LA County Museum for a First Friday Science Journalism kind of thing and so that's how I got to know her. And then we've done a couple of joint presentations in Chicago, New York and actually here in Washington sort of linking the arts and the sciences which is something I really think is a, a wonderful way of bringing different audiences together. And you say it's going to stay here at the Smithsonian? Yeah, it's going to, this well, it? the, well this, um, the exhibit, the exhibit here goes through uh, the, about the 24th of April. Uh, after the end of the exhibit, the permanent collection that belongs to the Institute for Figuring will go back to Los Angeles. And this part is what we need to spend the next four months really figuring out exactly how uh, we'll manage it, because it's pretty big, and uh, but it's so beautiful and so spectacular that the idea of having it all go into cardboard boxes seems completely impossible, so we're going to figure out what we need to do uh, to make sure that it has a life after the end of the exhibit right here. Now, can you tell us a little bit about this side, of the colorful side? I'm going to use the camera to pan. What are we looking at? What, what things could you point out? Well, there are all sorts of things here. This is the, the colorful part of the reef is to symbolize what a healthy reef should look like. And a lot of the things are rather coral-like, these little uh, button-like shapes are sort of coral. This is very coral-like here. With a, you can imagine these are the individual mouths of a, of a coral colony. This is a lot, a lot like a sponge. Uh, this is a little bit sponge-like. I'm not too entirely sure what that is. Here, of course, you see a starfish. That's really clear. And uh, in various other places, you can see sea fans, for example. That purple structure is sort of a sea fan-like thing. And then over there, you can see actually a, a, a jellyfish hanging from the side of the reef, the pale beige with the maroon uh, tentacles hanging down. So if you, it, the wonderful thing about this is you can look... Here's another sea fan, for example. That's a beautiful sea fan right there. Um, and this looks a little bit like a, like a sea anemone-like structure. Here's a, another starfish. And over there, actually, you can see some giant clams. So the closer you look, the more different kinds of things you can find. I haven't been, I'm, you know, with 4,000 pieces, you can find quite a lot of diversity here. And that would be very rare to see a reef in real life as beautifully clustered and full of life as this these days, right? Well, these days, a lot of reefs are not covered with living coral. It's true. Although there are places still on the planet, and I think it's important to remember that, that there are places that have been protected where the coral reefs are actually still quite healthy and they kind of give us a, a window into what we should be aiming for in terms of coral reef conservation. Uh, 
but uh, but it really does feel like a healthy this crochet coral reef does feel like a healthy really healthy reef particularly this side of it as we go around the other side we'll see parts of the reef that were designed specifically to uh, evoke some of the problems that coral reefs face. So, so right here we're sort of in the transition between the healthy reef you can see sort of as I say the jellyfish there and, uh, and this is a beautiful I think a giant clam right here but then as you move around um, you move around this towards the back of this reef you're going to start seeing that we're losing a lot of color and it's getting paler and paler and over here in the back in fact is a reef is made mostly out of very pale yarns to symbolize the problem of coral bleaching coral bleaching uh, happens whenever the water is too warm and this is a big problem in the context of global warming so um, most of these these organisms are in pale yarns to indicate they've lost the single cell plants that live in their tissues normally that provide some of their food and that's that's what happens when the water is too warm. Right now for example in the Caribbean many in many places including where I've worked in Panama the reefs are completely white they're actually even whiter than this as a function of the water being too warm and the problem is that when things stay like that for too long then the organisms starve to death and they die. Uh, at the, in the plastic part of the reef. If you look closely, this looks sort of be fantastically beautiful, but if you start looking closely, you see this is made out of aluminum foil, and then there's some batteries in here, and plastic bags, a fishing rod, and a whole bunch of uh, computer discs, and then, and then some plastic things from like soda cans. And then a lot of these, uh, for, and here's all plastic rings, and these are all made out, uh, some of these are all made out of plastic bags or crocheted. Uh, the yarn is made out of plastic. So here you see some, um, some kind of balls and, and then this is all videotape and this is all, these are all, see here, all, all this is are plastic bags that you could, like you could get in a supermarket. So all of this is sort of to symbolize the enormous amount of plastic pollution we have in the ocean, which is a problem not just for coral reefs actually, but for the ocean at large. It's amazing that you can make something so beautiful out of plastic, and I think there's a kind of balance that you have to think. You don't want to make it so beautiful that people think uh, that plastic in the reef is a good thing, but it is amazing what they've made, been able to make out of all these different pieces of basically garbage. Well, it's a terrific work of art, I think, and very educational. Thank you very much for sharing it. You're very welcome. I'm, I'm so pleased to have it here at the Smithsonian. And say again how long it will be here for? It will be here until the 24th of April. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Thank you.